there. It's Tuesday, July 16th here in Sarasota, Florida. And I am riding a pretty awesome high right now. I'd say it was a running high, but it started as soon as I got up and saw a particular post on my timeline from a friend of mine from my past. Today I'm going to talk to you, and I'll share that in a second, but today I'm going to talk just a little bit, and I'm going to try to be just a little bit, about one of the greatest passions of my life. One of the most influential parts of my life in terms of how it's defined who I am, who, who I am today, um, and how it's provided me the greatest number of tools to succeed, to achieve all that I've done in my life up until this point, including this most challenging year that I've made it through. I, I mean the most challenging year ever. And what is this area? Fitness. Fitness, exercise, athletics, sports, being part of a team, working as a team, all of it. Oh. I am going to have so many videos talking about all the different parts of fitness in my life because it's been very much like everything else, a roller coaster. In the terms of, I, it was not something I did for fun for a lot of years. You know, in my 20s and early 30s, it was almost like this, this thing that I loved, loved more than anything, became something I abused myself with, right? Because my main eating disorder was, I, it was definitely an exercise bulimic. I, it wasn't, I was never in there. I had one therapist and a phone therapy appointment. I had two appointments with this guy. It was right before I got married in 01. I was flipping out and, um, he suggested this, and as soon as he said it, it made so much sense. And so for the greater part, the other eating disorder is, is binge eating, but, but the biggest one is, is, is an exercise bulimia. So, I mean, if you know bulimia, right, you eat a lot and then you, you make yourself throw up. With exercise, you eat a lot and exercise, or in my case, I always exercised in the morning or tried to, and, um, and then sometimes twice a day, and, uh, and then the whole goal was to, was to work out and expend as close to the number of calories that I consumed a day. I mean, warped stuff, man. And so, so sad because it, it again, it, it was such, this is something that's supposed to be good for us, you know, and I just had a very, very, a uh, dysfunctional relationship between my, my body image, my eating, and my exercise. And I know where that, that you know, all those parts, the, the body image, I mean, they all are rooted in certain parts of my life, but the perfect storm of it all coming together and then it all together becoming really a pretty big problem I can tie to my Division I athletic experience. Now, I'm not going to get into that today, but to say that that was traumatic for me is, is not at all an exaggeration. Um, and, and, I mean, what, what, what we experienced at, at our, in our program was not something you would ever expect. When you go to college, I mean, you, you think going to college on an athletic scholarship, you know, that's a dream, right? Although it wasn't a dream of mine. I think I've shared in a previous story. I didn't think I was going to get a scholarship. I wasn't looking to get an academic or an athletic scholarship in college. You know, yet again, this was sort of one of my early examples of things happening for an absolute reason. And it, it definitely the whole basketball experience at USF, most certainly. God, does it make, and again, looking at retrospect, things gain even more. You'll understand and see how not accidental things are 
when you open yourself up to examine your, your life in this way, is, you know, and you start looking at things from your past. So basically, I knew and know that I'm at this very crucial point with, with all that I'm trying to live and be and do. And I, I've been just unbalanced, waking up. And, I mean, as soon as my eyes open, my mind's going to the work. And I come right out of bed, hit the computers, and I'm pretty much there, you know, most of the day, most of the day and not really making an effort to keep up my fitness. And I can feel it, and it, it just, it doesn't, I don't feel well when I'm not, when I'm not in shape. So I vowed last night that I was gonna get up and run this morning. So I wake up only to learn that I failed to, to charge my iPod. So as I waited for that, you know, I knew I had to wait at least 45 minutes or so for, for it to get some juice. And I hop on Facebook, and I see a post on my timeline, two posts, by a former high school teammate of mine, basketball teammate. Oh God, any of those girls. I mean, each and every one of them will forever hold a place in my heart. So anytime I see any sort of communication from any of them, that right there just warms my heart, brings a smile to my face, and makes me feel really good. But then what this teammate posted was incredible in terms of its timeliness. And yes, I'm choosing to interpret it as a sign. And there were two blog posts from, because this friend of mine also has her own running blog. She started running very recently, and it's, it's just, you know, I don't communicate directly with her, but we've had a few Facebook message exchanges. I mean, she looks phenomenal. She just seems like it's just catapulted her whole life in, in this running. And so she started her own blog, and this wasn't her writing, but it was another running blog, um, two entries from another person with, a, with a, a blog on running. And the little image for the post said, judging someone does not define who they are, it defines who you are. And it was sort of talking about all these misconceptions I mean, we can, we can talk about big stereotypes and generalizations based on outward appearance, but this was really talking specifically about the assumptions people make when you see a body frame, when you see somebody thin, when you see somebody obese, when you see somebody in between, and the assumptions that you make. Just brilliant. Brilliant for the timing because I am trying so very hard in my work. Um, Again, lots and lots of messages I'm trying to disseminate, but one of the big ones is do away with the labels. Stop, we're boxing ourselves in with the labels and the judgment. And, and it always, I'm telling you, from personal experience, the judgment we put towards others is always comes back to us. It's something about us that we're not at peace with. And so, you know, and, and this is coming from somebody who, and I've shared a little bit of some of the em embarrassing thoughts that I would have, particularly directed at women in my life, that were just reflections of my own insecurity. So just so many things, I could go off on, I can really go more in depth about what that particular quote says, but it just was a sign to me that, yep, this exercise thing and this body movement and this body image and speaking to women and I've already expressed women's huge, enormous role in bringing about world peace. And so I'm just jumping in with, with whatever comes out today talking about this. And interestingly, as I waited for my iPod to charge and was reading this awesome blog entry, I got the intuition or I got the desire to record and I just, I th thought, you know what, I'm, I should stretch because I'm, I'm historically, I've not been a good stretcher. Um, and, and I, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm, it just hit me to record because I will do things, you know, I dance a lot where I don't record and I sing when I don't record and I talk all the time to myself, you know, and but there are very specific times where the, the feeling is, turn the camera on, and that came this morning. 
and I just followed the energy. And I ended up doing a little exercise sort of just for myself, things that I struggle with because they're not yet habits. Um, as much as I've tried to make these things habits, um, they're just still not there. And, you know, and, and that, what's even interesting about that is that I had a friend come over on Sunday and he and I, he was helping me with some computer stuff. And one of the other things that, you know, I do meditate every day, but I don't meditate as much as I would like. And quite frankly, as much as I believe I need right now, I do do it every day. Um, but, but I want to do it more. And you know, it's so funny. I say, I want to, we say we want to do these things that are good for us. And it's just, it's hard. It's hard if they're not habits. So sometimes, a lot of times, all you need is one other person, one person to motivate you, to help you, you know, just jump in and do something that it's not that you really don't want to do it. It's 